Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the 97th Online Symmetronics Seminar. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Bing Feng Miao is currently an associate professor in the bottom of physics at Nanjing University. His main research interests are in spintronics and uh, spin catalytronics, including generation and detection of pure spin current with various methods, searching for high efficiency spintronics materials, spin orbit torque induced magne magnetic switching, and uh, magnetic skirmions. He received the bachelor's degree in 2009 and doctorate degree in 2014 at Nanjing University. Uh, Bing Feng, correct me if I'm wrong, you also did a, a postdoc at uh, uh, Johns Hopkins? Around uh, that time, I'm a, oh, exchange a student, graduate student, visiting student. Oh, visiting uh, a student at Johns Hopkins. After that, he began working as an associate research fellow at Nanjing University and was promoted to his current position in 2017. Dr. Mia has published more than 40 papers on peer reviewed journals such as Science Advances, PRL, PRB, etc. So, without further ado, Professor Mia, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction. And Thanks, Xing and Korea for their invitation. And today, uh, I'm being familiar from Nanjing University. And today, I'm going to talk about our recent uh, progress about the spin pumping measurements. Uh, in fact, the, the spin pumping technique has been widely used uh, to study the spin to charge conversion in heavy metals, brushed by interfaces, topological insulators, etc. And uh, however, there are some artifact signals such as spin rectifications and thermal contributions. So uh, it is very important to pick the pure spin information therein. And since we are a uh, online spintronics uh, uh, seminar, so I will not discuss about the importance and applications of spin current. So after a short introduction about the spin pumping technique, I will directly jump into the, the spin rectification effect, mainly due to the uh, anastrobic ma magnetic resistance and the plant hole effect. And in the second part, I will uh, discuss how to uh, separate the thermal contributions in the spin pumping. So uh, actually there have been many methods to generate pure spin current uh, electronically when we uh, inject a charge current into the heavy metal. It, uh, it will result in a particular spin current and where the spin polarization is within the in-plane transfer direction. So, and in the ferromagnet and normal metal bilayer, uh, the precession of the ma magnetization of the ferromagnet will inject a uh, spin current into the normal metal. This is a uh, spin pumping. And uh, the temperature gradient can also drive the uh, spin current uh, flows along the along the temperature gradient. This is spin seabed effect. And the detection of pure spin current actually uh, mostly relies on the inverse spin hole effect, where uh, perpendicularly injected uh, spin current will result in uh, in-plane charge current. So I will first discuss the spin pumping. So the dynamic of the ferromagnet can be described by the landau lifchitz gilbert equation. Here, the M is the magne magnetization. Uh, gamma is a gyro magnetic ratio. F effective includes uh, the external field, demagnetization field, and anastrophic field. And alpha is a damping factor. So if we consider a very simple case that a thin film without any magnetic anastrophic Magnetic So uh, when the frequency of the applied microwave magnetic field and the external field H0 satisfies this Kittel equation, the ferromagnet will process will process continuously. And when we uh, measure the microwave absorption curve uh, with a fixed frequency and sweeping magnetic field we will get this curve. This curve is, uh, has Lorentz symmetric line shape. And the peak sits at the resonance, the, uh, the resonance magnetic field. And the half line width actually is relates to the damping factor alpha. And for the ferromagnet and not normal metal bilayer, uh, when the, when the ferromagnet processes, the spin current will, gen, will be injected into the normal metal. 
And uh, due to the loss of the angular momentum, the damping as well as a half line width of the fair mag mag will increase. And when the spin current uh, enters the normal metal, it will be detected uh, through the inverse spin hall effect. And the spin pumping induced inverse spin hall effect, uh, of course, it scales with the spin hole angle and, the spin, uh, and has relation with spin fish lengths, but uh, that's not the topic uh, of this talk. So we'll not discuss about that parameters. So uh, the spin pumping induced inverse spin hole effect actually scales with the product of the in-plane precession angle alpha one and out-plane precession angle beta one. This product also scales with the uh, absorbed microwave. So the spin pumping uh, curve actually has a symmetric Lorentz line shape such as this. And because the spin polarization can be aligned by the magnetic field, so uh, when we reverse the magnet magnetic field, we will uh, obtain an uh, opposite spin pumping signal. So it is anti-symmetric with magnetic field. Is a uh, all the function with the field. And uh, in addition to the inverse spin hole effect, there, uh, there, there are artifacts such as uh, spin rectification due to the anisotropic magnetic resistance. Because uh, in the ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic metal, due to the AMR, its resistance actually depends on its direction. So when the uh, ferromagnet processes, uh, its resistance actually oscillates at a certain frequency. So if we all also has a in-plane RF current with the same frequency, so the coupling between the RF current and the RF resistance will result in a DC rectified voltage. This is AMI induced spin rectification, right? And more generally, uh, if we consider current with both a DC component and RF component, uh, the detected voltage actually can be has three terms. The first term is just the conventional AMR, and the second term is microwave photoresistance, which is the uh, uh, DC resistance change due to the precession, due to the resonance. In fact, one can use the, this, this term to estimate the precession angle, as I will demonstrate later. And last term is the uh, so-called AMI-induced spin rectification. This is due to the dynamic current. And here, this phi actually is the phase shift between the induction current and the dynamic magnetization. So, uh, and also uh, the, the angular dependence of the AMI-induced uh, rectification is sine two theta which is the first derivative of the AMR. Right. Okay. So uh, without giving the details of calculation, because due to this, this phase shift, actually the AMR induced rectification has both symmetric line component and anti-symmetric anti line component, as we uh, schematically here. And Equally important because this rectification actually uh, is proportional to sine two theta, which means it is uh, doesn't change sine uh, when we reverse the magnetization. It is symmetric with magnetization. V h equals V minus h, and also when theta equals zero, one hundred eighty degree and 90, 90 degree, the spin rectification due to AMR is zero. And on the other hand. The spin pumping induced inverse spin hole effect has only symmetric Lorentz line component and it is scales with sine theta, which means uh, it uh, changes sign with magnetic field and also reaches maximum when theta equals 90 degree. So it is generally believed that when we perform the experiments with the field perpendicular to the strike, the theta equals 90 degree. Uh, if you observe a symmetric line component and which is the change of sign with reversing magnetic field, it is believed that this is due to spin current. Yeah, this criteria actually has been widely used in the in the literatures. 
For instance, this is two paper discussing the steam pumping for two electronic gas and two dimensional electron gas and a superconductor. And here one find uh, overall the signal indeed changes with magnetic field and is dominated by the Lorentz symmetric component. And the same method has been applied to uh, study the spin to charge conversion in topological insulator, uh, direct semi-metal, and even the ferromagnetic film itself. But in all these references, if you look carefully, you find that even when the magnetic field is applied transfers to the current, transfers to the strike, there are still some anti-symmetric components reflecting that there is some rectification signal here. Right. So we begin to uh, discuss our results. And suppose we have a permaloy, platinum, and egg trilayer. When egg processes, it will inject spin current from down to up. When permaloy processes, it will inject spin current from up to down. So due to the inverse spin hole effect, we will expect that these two opposite spin currents will result in opposite charge current. So, and typically the ferromagnetic resonance, resonance field for permaloy is different from peak. So we would expect to observe this deep to deep peak feature. Right. So uh, this is our uh, experiment setup and we place the stripe onto the planar waveguide and we feed the coplanar waveguide with a micro source generator. And we use to increase the signal to noise, to noise ratio. We modulate the microwave on and off and detect the, watch, uh, the voltage along the track to the same frequency use a locking amplifier. In contrast to this deep to and the peak feature, we actually observe the double peak. This obviously is not consistent with the inverse mean hole effect in platinum. Uh, since it is an insulator, actually this is spin rectification is very small. So we decide to focus on the permaloy case. And we perform the same experiments uh, for a 10 nanometer permaloy single layer. Indeed, for uh, when the microwave frequency is six gigahertz and eight gigahertz, we, above, we observe this inverse spin hole effect light signal. The voltage changes with magnetic field and is dominated by the Lorentz symmetry component. So, but, but when we increase the frequency, we find both the line shape and the field symmetry actually changes, change dramatically. And because in our experiments, the magnetic field is applied perpendicular transfer to the strike, that means the theta equals 90 degree. In this case, AMI induced rectification actually disappears. So we don't need to consider it. And, but the, if it is due to the inverse spin hole effect, it should only have symmetric Lorentz component. And more importantly, it will not change change side with frequency and cannot be the same sign into opposite magnetic field. And actually, uh, the frequency dependent uh, uh, line shape is a signature for spin rectification. Uh, this is, of course, but this is AM matrix. So we think uh, there are some other possibilities. There are other artifacts here. So, but, uh, we find that the microwave above, microwave magnetic field above the planar waveguide actually is very complex. It's three dimension. The left graph is for the cross section and this is for the longitudinal cross section. Uh, this is very complex with all possible uh, directions, components. So, but we find that in the gap of the signal line and the ground line, actually the magnetic field, the RF magnetic field, is mainly, uh, is almost one dimensional uh, along the V direction. So we decide to uh, switch to this geometry and with the full understanding of the signal here, we will return back and discuss the data when Pomeroy 
placed onto the coplanar waveguide. So we use this new geometry. Uh, uh, it's not that new, actually. We use this geometry for several years. Uh, we place the sample in between the gap uh, be, uh, of the signal line and the ground line. Here, the RF magnetic field actually is mainly along the direction. This is data. Totally different from uh, previously presented data. Here, we observe a signal actually, which is symmetric with magnetic field, which is symmetric with magnetic. This signal, of course, is not consistent with inverse beam Hall effect, which must change its sign with magnetic field. And this is also not consistent with the AMR induced spin rectification, because for 90 degree, AMR induced rectification disappears. So actually we think it is due to the uh, transverse induction current along the y direction. And because uh, in addition to the uh, uh, z direction microwave magnetic field, HZ, there is also in-plane electric field in y direction. So due to the Ohm's law, we have a y direction induction current. And the y direction current will produce a planar hole effect along the x direction, along the stripe. So traditionally, uh, in the whole measurement, we have one current source, but two voltage meter. In this case, we know the AMR actually scales with the length, while the planar hole effect scales with the width. So if the length to width ratio is very large, typically we will not consider the planar hole effect. But here, the situation is different. We have only one voltage meter, but two current source, two current. So in this case, both the planar hole effect and AMR scales with the length. So its current density, uh, Jx, is comparable with JY, we would expect the planar hole effect will be comparable with AMR. So uh, we further discuss its angular dependence and the uh, planar hole effect scales with cosine theta times sine theta. So its rectification scales with its first derivative as cosine two theta. Yeah, indeed, cosine two theta means the data is symmetric with magnetic field, consistent with our experiments. And the cosine two theta also predict the side change between theta equals zero and 90 degree, because cosine zero equals one, cosine 180 equals minus one. Exactly, we observe a side change when we rotate the magnetic field from zero to 90 degree. So it is consistent with the planar hole effect induced spin rectification. And we know that, in fact, the planar hole effect induced rectification has been discussed uh, in several references, but uh, it seems that uh, it hasn't drawn enough attention. Possibly, I think maybe uh, we have to intuition that the charge current, the induction current will be constrained along the strike. So people, uh, tend to neglect, neglect the transverse uh, induction current. So we also perform the experiments with different in-plane uh, directions of the magnetic field. We find the, now the data can be well fitted by a combination of AMR induced rectification plus the planar hole effect induced rectification. And in fact, we can also use this rectified voltage to estimate the current density because the rectified voltage is proportional with the in-plane precession angle and the resistivity uh, due to the AMR, resistivity difference due to AMR and the current density and the stripe length. And uh, the resistivity difference actually can be easily obtained by just forming the angular dependent resistance measurement, the AMR measurement. And the, as, uh, as I mentioned, 
several slides previously, uh, the in-plane precession angle actually can be obtained from the microwave photo distance, because this is due to the DC resistance change uh, at the resonance, resonance state. And uh, from uh, from this equation and the AMR measurement, we estimate that the in-plane precession angle is around 1.1 degree. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention that the power of the micro wave here is around uh, 320 milliwatt. So I forgot to give this information. And with this precession angle and the AMR, we can get the induction current density. Actually, we find the transverse induction current uh, current density is about one quarter of the longitudinal one. And we can further use the the precession angle to estimate the magnetic uh, RF magnetic field by this equation. And the uh, effective magnetization can be obtained just by fitting the Kittel equation. And the damping factor can be obtained by the linear relation between half line width and the frequency. And we estimate that the microwave magnetic field HZ is about 2.3 or for 320 milliwatt in our plan waveguide. And we can further uh, estimate the possible inverse spin hole effect in cumulo in our geometry, our geometry. So because the spin pumping induced inverse spin hole effect is a odd function of the magnetic field, while the plan hole effect induced rectification is a even function. So by this very simple symmetry argument, we can deduce the pure spin current contribution, contribution and rectification. And this is the results for single layer homoloid, 10 nanometers homoloid. We find that uh, in, our, in our geometry, the inverse spin hole effects of homoloid actually is negligibly small compared to the rectification. And we also perform the same experiments on pomeloy and platinum bilayer. And the left part is for the spin pumping induced inverse spin hole effect, while the right part is the uh, rectification. We've, it can be uh, noticed that for three, uh, 0.3 nanometer, uh, the inverse spin hole effect is comparable with the rectification. Uh, but for seeker platinum, uh, the rectification is uh, is very small compared to the inverse spin hole effect. And we also summarize the frequency dependent ratio between the inverse spin hole effect and the planar hole effect, as if, as expected. And the spin hole effect contribution increases with the platinum thickness. And we also find an overall trade. Uh, the spin current become more dominant at high frequency. So, in fact, one referee of our manuscript suggests us to replot the data in the log scale. Uh, it, uh, actually, similar behavior, similar feature can be observed. Now, with the understanding of the planar hole effect induced rectification, we now return back to our first experiments when Pomeroy is placed above the Copeland waveguide. Again, due, because the uh, magnetic field is applied transfer to the stripe, so we will not consider the AMI effect. And now uh, the magnetic field actually, the RF magnetic field actually has uh, multiple components. At least we have HX and HZ. For HZ, as we have discussed, it it is uh, even function the, 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 uh, because the planar hole effect uh, is symmetric with magnetic field. It does not change sign with magnetic field. But if there is the in-plane RF magnetic field, the situation changes because uh, 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 because the projection of the RF uh, HX to the direction transfers to the magnetization. Because only the trans component, uh, only the magnetic, fact, magnetic field transferred to the magnetization can excite the process. So 
this projection actually will result in a prefecture sine theta. So in this case, the spin rectification under HX, actually it is the odd function. It changes sign with magnetic field. So this feature actually is similar as the inverse spin hole effect. So if the component of HZ and HX changes with frequency, we would expect a frequency dependent uh, line shape. So that, so, so we think that if there, ha there is in plane uh, RF magnetic field, we we'll need to be careful about uh, uh, distinguish the spin current signal. Okay, I'd like to summarize uh, my first part of my talk to demonstrate that even for a very narrow stripe, uh, the transverse induction current can uh, have rectification due to planar Hall effect. And in some cases, this planar Hall effect induced the rectification has similar feature as a spin, uh, spin current. So we need to be careful about this. And we also give a better situation, the geometry where the symmetry of planar Hall effect in due rectification is different, is opposite to the inverse spin Hall effect. So this would be good for ident identify the uh, pure spin current conclusion. So this work is mainly performed by my student He Kang and in collaboration with Professor Ding Haifeng at Nanjing University and Dr. Zhang Yihui and Professor Hu Tianmin at University of Manitoba. In fact, uh, most of the data I presented have been published on this paper. And now I would like to move to my uh, second part of my talk, how to address the thermal contributions in the spin pumping. Uh, because spin pumping has been widely used to study the spin hole angle in heavy metals. For instance, uh, the spin hole angle for platinum is opposite to tantalum. So we would expect to observe uh, these two curves with opposite signs. But when the sample is radiated with microwave, it will also be heated. So the, uh, the, the Typically, what we study is a thin film deposit on thick substrate. So the temperature increase of the thin film will naturally establish a perpendicular temperature gradient. And in this case, the thermal signal due to longitudinal spin effect, feedback effect, and anomalous effect will be involved. So, uh, and we find that uh, the angular dependence for the spin pumping and the uh, thermal signals actually are same. So it's not difficult to distinguish them from each other. And more importantly, uh, for the ferromagnetic metal system, if, if the its anomalous effect is dominant over the pure spin current contribution, and if the thermal signal also dominates in the spin pumping, then it will be Problemat problematic to address the spin hole angle in spin pump with spin pumping if the thermal effect due to anomalous effect is dominant, right? So uh, we find that uh, in literature, indeed, there are some discussion about the heating effect at the ferromagnetic resonance state. In this paper, the authors observed a temperature increase in the resonance state of the cobalt ion alumni stripe. And there is also a debate uh, on whether the thermal signal influence on the spin pumping. In this paper, the authors studied uh, uh, the cobalt ion boron platinum and platinum cobalt ion boron bilayers. And they attribute the different amplitude of the spin pumping data to the different temperature gradient within the sample. However, in this paper, the authors believe that uh, the thermal artifact actually is negligibly small compared to the spin pumping induced inverse spin hole effect. And there is no quantitative method to address the thermal contribution in the spin pumping. So uh, this is uh, our experimental setup. Actually, this is same as the first part but I want to emphasize that 
our microwave is modulated by the locking amplifier with a high frequency around 8.3 kilohertz. And when the switch is on, the microwave is applied in onto the uh, sample. Then there is a pumping signal. And when the switch is off, there is no signal. So the locking actually depicts, picks, the, the locking actually picks the signal, the difference between the on and off state. So this is the raw data for our pomeloy and the platinum bilayer. Aside from the two peaks at the resonance field, where one can find there is a voltage state near zero field. And this curve actually follows uh, the hysteresis loop of the pomeloy. And this step possibly has two sources. The first one is due to the non-resonance rectification as proposed in this paper. And the second is due to the heating induced thermal effect, such as longitudinal spin feedback effect and luminance effect. But we know that the non-resonance rectification can, uh, disappears at high field when the magnetization is aligned with the external field. And we notice that in our sample, the background for the low field and the high field actually are almost the same. So we think uh, the zero step is due to thermal contribution. And the peak value, the peak signal actually also has two possible uh, signal source. The first one is due to the spin pumping induced inverse spin hoist, which we would like to uh, detect. This is the signal we would like to address. And the second is a thermal contribution uh, due to the additional temperature increase at the resonance state. And we perform the power dependent measurements and find that both the voltage state and uh, the peak value linearly increase with the power. So it is not easy to distinguish them from the power dependent measurement. But we think, uh, we know that the thermal signal actually is proportional to the temperature gradient. And for the thin film deposit on a fixed substrate, uh, we think the temperature gradient also scale proportional with the temperature increase uh, of the uh, thin film, because we believe the substrate, the temperature substrate is almost a constant. And near room temperature, the resistance of the metal actually is a linear, has a linear, is linearly relates to the, to the temperature. So we think maybe we can address the thermal contribution from the resistance measurement. So we, uh, mayor, uh, so we, uh, inject, uh, uh, DC current into the stripe, uh, I0 and minus I0 and get this resistance. This is the data we obtained. Actually, this signal is the resistance increase between microwave on and off state. However, this is very high, high frequency switch is about 10 kilohertz. And this background is due to the heating of the resistance. And the and we find that indeed uh, the, the voltage state near zero field in, uh, is lin linearly uh, proportional to the uh, resistance increase background. And from this, so we can establish a, a, a fitting curve, a scaling curve. So if we can know the resistance increase due to heating at the resonance condition, from this scaling curve, we will we can uh, obtain uh, uh, the thermal contribution, the thermal signal from a luminance effect and a spin feedback effect. However, uh, as we mentioned, that in addition to the heating, there is also microwave photoresistance. This can also result in a change of the resistance. So we need to extract the heating induced resistance from the peak here. Luckily, uh, we find that the heating effect actually is independent with the, the in-plane direction of the magnetic field. 
while the microwave photoresistance has a very specific angular dependence. So from the, with the known parameters, we calculate that the microwave photoresistance disappears for pomoloid and platinum bilayer at around uh, 46 degree. So at this certain angle, any residual resistance increase can be ascribed to the thermal part, which we found is very small. It's almost within the error bar of our experiments. So, and with the help of this scaling curve, we can estimate the thermal signal at the ferromagnetic resonance condition, which is less than 0.1% of the spin pumping curve signal. And we also use the same technique to study the thermal signals uh, in egg and platinum bilayer. Now, due to the uh, smaller, smaller thermal connectivity of the GGG substrate, we found the step near zero field increases a lot. And uh, from also, uh, we measure the resistance difference between microwave on and off state. And we also find that this uh, resistance increase background scales linearly with the voltage state. So again, we need to find out uh, the resistance enhancement uh, due to heating at the resonance, con resonance condition. Uh, although EEG is an insulator, there is no AM, but we know EEG platinum has spin hole magnetic resistance, the SM. So in principle, it also has microwave uh, photoresistance. And after, uh, after excluding uh, the microwave photoresistance, we can we obtain that the resistance change due to heating at a very magnetic resonance is also very small within the air bar our our experiments. And we further estimate the thermal signal, uh, which is less than one time, times minus 10 to the minus three microvolt. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, from this RT curve uh, of the eagle platinum bilayer, we can also estimate that uh, the, the, the temperature increase background between the microwave on and off state is around uh, 0.3 Kelvin for eagle and platinum. And now I'd like to uh, summarize uh, my the talk, second part of my talk. And we give a quantitative method to uh, estimate the thermal contributions in the spin pumping measurements. And we found that uh, the thermal contribution actually is uh, very small. It's negligible for both egg platinum and pomoloid platinum bilayers. So this work is mainly formed by my student Chen Jun in collaboration with Professor Ding Haifeng at Nanjing University, Dr. Ding Jingjun and Professor Wu Minzhong at Colorado State University helps us uh, for the growth of X film on the GG substrate. And this paper was published last year in Physical Review B. And uh, this is the last slide of my talk. And this is take home message. In the first part, we demonstrate that uh, the transverse induction current can have planar hole effect induced rectification. And in some cases, this data has similar feature as inverse spin hole effect. So we need to be careful about addressing the pure spin, addressing spin current with spin pumping, especially when there is impulling RF magnetic field. And in the second part, we give a quantitative method to address the thermal contributions in spin pumping we find uh, it is negligible. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. We can also thank the speaker using the reactions buttons. Uh, this talk is open for questions. If you're on Zoom, please just use the raise hand function on the reactions. And if we're watching this on Twitch, please just type your questions in the chat box. I'll read it for you. I can ask the, the first question, okay? Um, so uh, 
we're always worried about the rectification effect in doing spin pumping and versus spin hole effect measurement. And I think from the reading, it seems that the stripe in the uh, slot slot line of the Copan wave guide seems to be one of the best structure because of the uh, microwave current and microwave magnetic field is relatively well understood. But from your uh, talk, it seems that the R field in that slot is, uh, should be only in the Z direction, out of plane direction. But you actually can have induced the current in your geometry, I guess, both along the X direction and along the Y direction, is that correct? And the seems that for this geometry, the current along the Y direction is a quarter of the current along the X direction. Is that right? Yeah, the induction current is uh, smaller for the transfer direction. Yes, you're right. Okay. But all of this current are potentially gonna generate rectification effect. As you said, the, along the current, they can, along the stripe, you're gonna have the AMR and the perpendicular to the stripe, you have PHE as you analyzed here. But I have uh, some questions regarding that. Usually, whenever you have pH planar hole effect rectification effect, you also have anonymous hole effect rectification. Yeah. And they yes. have different phases. Yeah. And yes. also, the line shape depends on the relative phase between the induced current and the microwave magnetic field. In yeah. your research, are you able to pinpoint the relative phase between those two things? Uh, in fact, uh, yes, we can do that from the line shape. Yeah. Let's assume it's only PHE, right? Uh, assuming only planar Hall effect. But we, uh, what if we also have anomalous Hall effect with a 90 yes, degree oh, phase shift? You actually have two questions. One is uh, why, actually, why we don't consider anomalous Hall effect rectification right. here, right? And right. secondly, how to uh, get the uh, phase shift with right. the line shape. And uh, Pomeroy actually, uh, the AMR of Pomeroy is very small. So we don't consider the plan an anomalous hole effect here. Uh, recently, we also performed the Quine boron. In that case, a norm, maybe I can show you this. Uh, the, no the anomalous hole effect rectification is very large. Maybe I can show you the date. Uh, excuse me. Mm. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Uh, in fact, the anomalous Hall effect induced rectification also is independent with the magnetic field because when you rotate, rotate the in-plane, uh, uh, in-plane external field, the uh, the magnetization is always perpendicular to the HZ, right? So, so we uh, have performed the angular dependent measurements for the cobalt boron single layer, and we considered uh, the AMI induced rectification, planar hole effect rectification, and north hole effect in rectification. This is a obtained uh, signal for the symmetric line component and anti symmetric line component. For both symmetric and anti symmetric line component, we find there is a large shift, shift from the zero background. This large shift actually is due to the anomalous hole effect, which is constant under HD excitation. So, but, but for Pomeroy, it is indeed very small. And secondly, due to, uh, you talk about the uh, phase shift, indeed, yes, the, the answer is correct. Just by uh, the phase shift is actually the arc tangent of, the arc tangent of, uh, be, uh, of the ratio between anti-symmetric and symmetric component. Sure, if you only have plan in the whole effect, right? Uh, yes, right. Okay, yeah. And if you have other rectifications, so we, you need to uh, separate one from each other and discuss only one, uh, one type of rectification. Sure, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Milev, please.
Hi, Bing Tang. Long time now, no see. Hi, hi, Yungo. Great talk, very, very clear, really enjoyable. Now, uh, I have to say, you know, of course, better than most, uh, there is, uh, you've chosen your system so that you don't care about it, but there is always magnetic anisotropy and you completely stayed out of it. Uh, even working within plain field, you don't care about the shape anisotropy. Uh, so do you have any worries or plans to include magnetic anisotropy or samples with magnetic anisotropy? Uh, I think the, the shape anisotropy here is very small. It's less than 20 Oster, but our external field is uh, in the order of 1,000 Oster. So I, I think the, the, the shape anisotropy is not important here. That's about the shape of isotropy, but uh, so are, are you, well, Bernoulli is soft enough, still, yeah. uh, uh, obviously, you don't care about some minimal crystalline anisotropy. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. The, uh, without magnetic anisotropy, shape or otherwise, everything is so clear, this has to go into the textbooks. Okay. Uh, I'm not kidding. Because that, that's the way one can understand what's going on. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you should consider writing a, uh, writing a book about this, summarizing all those uh, possible effects. Um, oh, I'm preparing the, this part. I, 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 I also need to fit the review B. <laughs> that's good. Then you know the, which editor is going to handle that. No, <laughs> no. I actually, I have to say that that's one thing. I actually, uh, I don't handle. So these manuscripts that he showed, uh, I avoid being the handling editor. I see. I see. So, and it's only by chance that my background is like that. I didn't have time to change it. I'm sorry about that. Any other question? I also want to ask you to just comment on this uh, using the spin pumping to measure the inverse spin pump inverse spin hole effect in general. Do you suggest uh, we should always use pomoloi just because it doesn't have much of the anomalous hole effect rectification effect? Or does that matter? Because my worry is while you show that your pomoloi platinum sample has a much stronger spin pumping inverse spin hole effect signal than rectification, it may not be applicable to other, you know, more exotic materials. When you put a, a ferromagnet with another heavy metal or some topological insulated materials, if the spin pumping inverse spin hole effect is relatively weak, then the rectification may overwhelm that and the line shape is the, just all kinds of line shapes that can come from the rectification effect, right? Yes, you are definitely right. Yes, that's the problem. Yeah. Even for these 0.3 nanometers platinum, you can you find the inverse spin coil that is comparable with rectification. In fact, 0.3 nanometer platinum already has very strong spin optic coupling compared to many other new materials, right? So, so I think it, one should be very careful about this. And uh, most ideally, you should refer to EEG, <laughs> which is a magnetic insulator. So in that case, the rectification could be much, much smaller. It, SMR is still sizable. It, it is smaller than yeah, pomoloi, yeah, but, but it's-, it's uh, Okay. Pomolo, uh, AMR is in the order of 1%, but SMR is in the order of 0.1%, right? But the spin pumping efficiency is also comparable? Uh, in fact, X efficiency is much higher than Pumalo. I mean, the damping is smaller, but the interface transparency is also yeah. higher in you. Very okay. high efficiency. Very high so so you, you, you would suggest that, uh, generally speaking, everything done should be done on EEG if, if, if possible, and that will have a much weaker rectification. Like but sometimes it is not applicable because many structures, because EEG needed to be heated, uh, needed to an anneal, but yeah. many materials cannot survive under annealing. So in that case, uh, you, you, only have, you must refer to the magnetic, ferromagnetic metal. So 
especially in this case, we need to be very careful about addressing the spin current with spin pumping. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any other question? Okay, if not, we'll end uh, today's official session here, but uh, I welcome you to stay and we'll turn off the uh, recording and uh, continue the discussion. Yeah. Thank you very much.